one. Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, depending on where and when you are watching and joining. Thank you so much for meeting us here this afternoon. We so appreciate you coming to Africa Online TV. So much is going on in our country. So much with school shootings, uh, separation of parents and children, children can't learn. They're just feeling so much pressure, pressure, pressure. And what are we doing with all of our anxiety? To the psychiatrists and psychologists, some are drinking and smoking away, others are doing something much more drastic and much more permanent. That's suicide. I don't know. I don't know if I've reached that point. I guess I have never. But some people think that committing suicide is an easy way out. It is not. You're not just taking your life, but you're also taking away the life of those that you love and those that love you. Because now they have to go through the grief of missing you, trying to decide what happened, how did it happen. Some of them are feeling guilty. Some are blaming themselves. But we want to talk about suicide today. How can it be prevented? What are some of the signs to look for to know that your loved one, especially your children, are suicidal? We have an expert with us today, and we are so happy that we are going to talk about. Join us as we enter the conversation. Now, if you're on Facebook and you want to join the conversation, come on over here to Zoom. Meet us here, and you will be able to have comment and input into the conversation. Now, over to my co-host, Nia Sung, for the editorial of the day. Good afternoon, my brother. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good afternoon, and welcome to our Sunday show. It is the beginning of the last week of the month of April. Really? It is already, yes. Would you believe it? Of course, I do, because I watch the calendar like something that I must do every day, every evening, every morning. Well, calendar watchers like to always put their eyes on the calendar. And so April happens to be one of those short months having just 30 days. Today, April 23rd, 2023 is, believe it or not, the 113th day of the year. And this leaves us with 252 days until 2023 is behind us. It is the 17th Sunday of 2023 on the 17th week of 2023, if we go by the United States Standard Week number calculation. It is the 35th day of spring, Ambassador Lisa. There are 59 more days until summer, 59 days. That is about two months. Some of the April 23rd popular holidays and observances worldwide, that is, include World Book Day. Yes, today is World Book Day. It is English Language Day, especially if Australia, Canada, United Kingdom, India, New Zealand, United States, Nigeria, and South Africa, just to mention a few, are the countries you pledge allegiance to. Of course, many of us pledge allegiance to just one, but all the same, you can pledge allegiance to more than one. But that is a different story. It is national, let me see here. I'm having some slow motion here. It is National Secretary Day. Did you ever have use a secretary in your work, in your services? Yes, if you did, given some of the things we just said, giving that secretary an accolade on a day like this is very, very important. Give her a pat in the back and say, oh, you've been doing a wonderful job. And so given some of the things we just said, International English Language Day, who can emphasize on that, is celebrated on April 23rd every year and is specially or specifically dedicated to creating awareness about the English language's history, as well as boosting proficiency for speakers all around the world. After all, many claim that English is the most spoken language in the world. So you have to speak it proficiently. A wide range of activities like book reading, film viewing, and quizzes 
are hosted by different organizations around the world to celebrate this day, English Language Day. Also related to it, but well, coming from that part of the world is National Shakespeare Day. National Shakespeare Day is, an, is celebrated all over the world, not because we love him so much, but because he wrote so many important books, especially in English. And since we're celebrating English Language Day, we celebrate this day in honor of Shakespeare, who by who can either be watching one of his popular plays, talking about like his one of his characters. I don't even know how to talk like Romeo or Juliet, and even trying to dress in attire that, that was used at that time. Well, that era is past, and we are in the 21st century. We get another shot at love on National Lovers Day, which falls on this. Sunday, April the 23rd, as Valentine's Day, that is celebrated in February. But experts and devotees to love, that is, say that if you missed it, that is, if you missed Valentine's Day, you have the chance to make up for this Lover's Day, this 23rd day of April. And of course, you can dedicate something to it or something for it, or you can go loved one and say, oh, I missed it, but love, happy love day. And unlike February 14 or St. Martin, uh, St. Valentine's Day, this particular day makes up, gives us time to make up, gives us time to, of course, fall back and say, well, I missed you, but today we are together. So while love is not, of course, our preoccupation today, what worries us most today is something that goes with love because when we love, we try to make sure it doesn't happen. And we are talking about suicide, as we heard Ambassador Lisa say. Suicide, suicidal thoughts and suicide prevention. Those are the things on our plate today. And generally September is the month reserved for this condition, which though not an illness per se, has become so prevalent we cannot wait to talk about it. Thinking about suicide is something we should all raise awareness about because silence could mean being complicit. And so because of its growing prevalence these days, Africa Online Media Corporation thought to do awareness this day Thought to raise awareness and some whistleblowing, if we use one of the most used words these days, now and more than more often than not, we should raise awareness and blow the whistle about suicide, how it comes about, what happens, is it an accident or just a pre-planned something? Well, we will hear more from our experts in the house. Our loved ones and friends, siblings and friends, lovers and spouses, children and parents are too precious and too important to be left to suffer in silence or engage in suicidal thoughts and actions when we do what we do because we think that the time has come for us to turn out the light on ourselves. Society in general and our families in particular are too precious to be allowed the shock and the trauma of losing you or losing a loved one through suicide. It is therefore a collective responsibility to lend a hand, to report a change in a close one's lifestyle, or to simply look or avoid looking the other way just because we thought that person, even though we love him, is just doing something for his own good. No, it's usually not. Even when we are too scared to talk to the individual we sub suspect of being a little wayward, from the previous way, we should make a phone call, that important phone call. We should be able to render that service that can help, or we should be able to help that individual or put him or her in our prayers. So we should remember that not raising the, the alarm and not raising awareness is being complicit. And just being indifferent can eventually become the nightmare we wish we had avoided. Suicide is certainly a preventable occurrence, if I may say so, and if and when we, some, we do something to prevent it, we certainly will be moving the, the needle faster rather than slower, because when we are indifferent, we are 
being complicit, as I keep saying, and we are supposed to do something to act, to raise awareness, to blow the whistle. At this point, the chair of Africa Media Corporation, Africa Online Media Corporation, should have the microphone to let our main guest lead us in today's discussion. I do not want to steal the show from him because he is a specialist in that field. Reverend Pam, are you ready with us? Always ready. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Nicholas Santos Ngu is the show. So you cannot steal the show from him, <laughs> you know. We, we, we were there before he graduated. We, we celebrated with him at his graduation. So he's a, he's a pioneer. He's been you know, part of us. So uh, you said something about secretary. Uh, shout out to all the secretaries. I've never been a secretary, but uh, I, well, mine was called an executive assistant. So I, I, I would say I, technically I never had a secretary, but I had an executive assist, assistant. You know, and these days the secretaries have been replaced by virtual you know, a lot of technology have uh, have replaced um, secretaries. You know, but um, uh, this, like you say, um, the, the the number of suicides in our community, especially African community, is going up. That's why we are tackling this subject today. Thanks to Dr. Santos, who you know suggested it, uh, uh, and um, we we are hoping that. Um, after this show, and people would, would, those who are listening, they will share this link because you don't know how many lives you're going to save. Uh, Dr. Santos, on behalf of Africa Online Media Corporation, uh, all our anchors, Nia Song, Ambassador Lisa, uh, Dr. Ogoji, who is our uh, uh, Chief Medical Advisor, we want to appreciate you. I'm not welcoming you because you are part of us, but we want to appreciate you for everything you do. You know, there are other people in your profession, they don't make time to share their knowledge. You know, so we really, really appreciate you. Uh, it's just some of these suicides that are happening are ridiculous. For example, a woman committed suicide because of a man. Are you kidding me? That doesn't make any sense. There's no justification for, there may be reasons, but there's no justification for suicide because that's a one way ticket to hell. You kill yourself, you're not going to heaven. That's for sure. Because you don't have a right to take any life, including your own life. So that's not a judgmental statement. That is a statement of fact and a statement of faith. So hopefully uh, our listeners will know no matter how bad things get, killing yourself is not the solution. So uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Santos, so those who are uh, uh, listening to you for the first time, Ania Song, um, I, I, I would like, you know, after you, you guys pose the first question, we have Brother Oliver from South Africa, who is no stranger to this show. I would like for us to give him the mic. I see a Moses Chong, but his mic is not connected. I sent him a, um, uh, a text, uh, a, a chat to connect his mic. But after you guys ask the first uh, uh, two questions. Let's go to him because it's in South Africa and it's late over there uh, to also weigh in. He can tell us some of the situations on the continent. So Dr. Santos, the mic is yours. And then after that, we'll go to the anchors. Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, fellow panelists of Africa Online Media Corporation. Uh, good evening, uh, audience. Um, as Reverend Palm said it right, I am not a new name in the house. Um, I've been participating here when it comes to issues that are of very uh, huge concern to our community. Uh, in fact, I always consider my participation in African or in African online as uh, part of community work that I do for this community. And today I was just thinking that maybe I'll have to propose that this should be considered like continuing education credit so that every hour I spend here counts towards my extension of licenses. Because uh, before I come here, I must make sure that I glance towards, I glance on one or two materials to refresh my brain uh, because I consider what I say here uh, to be very, very important. And um, I also want to appreciate Africa Media Corporation for the recommendations they have always given when it comes to my issues, like when I had the president, US Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award, I think they were one of the contributors because of the work that I do for the community. Um, this is pro bono work, pro bono work. Uh, fortunately, um, 
when Reverend Pam contacted me today, although I had proposed this topic, uh, given the fact that the past few weeks have not been easy for our community, we lost about three or four persons, both in the diaspora and in Cameroon in particular, uh, to suicide. So I decided to say we should uh, lay more emphasis on suicide because uh, uh, throughout my study and throughout my psychological work, I seem to be confused at times whether suicide is actually a symptom of a mental disorder or seem suicide is an, a mental illness itself because the magnitude with which suicide presents itself seem to be a mental illness rather than a symptom of an illness, or you can call it both because of the magnitude and the severity of symptom. Today, I was glancing through a lot of materials uh, towards uh, preparation for licensing exams because we have to do continuing licensing in various areas. And I think um, I was preparing for an examination uh, towards the renewal of my California National uh, Alliance for Mental Illness Certification, which is NAMI, uh, dealing treating with critically mentally ill. Critically mentally ill are people, persons who fall within the psychotic class of disorders like schizophrenia and the bipolar, and also those who are suicidal because these patients stand a very high uh, uh, probability of being suicidal. But I, when I was going through, I was looking at the global assessment of functioning scale. You know, we talk of the global assessment of functioning scale that exists five of the DSM, the American Psychiatric Association uh, classification of diseases, of mental international classification of diseases and American Psychiatric Association uh, classification of mental health diseases or disorders. Uh, we talk of axis one, which is the presenting mood situation, axis two, which is the personality, uh, and anxiety. Then we talk about uh, axis three, which is the medical condition, axis four, which is the psychosocial issues, axis five, which is the global assessment of functioning. And we had discovered that when someone is having 50 over 100 in the global assessment of functioning, which means in terms of severity of the mental health condition, uh, if you fall within 50, it means you are, you, you may be suicidal. If you fall around 20, it means you uh, you need you need attention, and uh, then if you fall around zero, it means there are no uh, 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 there are no uh, you have not gathered enough information to make a determination. So the higher you go, the more freer you are. The lesser you go in scores, the more severe you become. So when I looked at this, then uh, I also there was also a question that came about. Um, if a, an adolescent tells you the therapist that he is suicidal or he is homicidal, are you supposed to breach confidentiality to tell the parents? In those cases, during our informed consent, we have to brief all our clients that we will breach confidentiality when we get any information about you killing yourself or killing universal orders. And that is very important. So Reverend Pam, I don't want to take you people too much into the subject matter because people may get lost at the introductory phase. Let me wait for the questions so that I go the way they come so that the population can or the audience can better understand. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Before the anchor speak, uh, uh, Dr. Santos, whatever you need, we would issue uh, those hours. Uh, Ambassador Lisa uh, will do your certificate uh, and Ambassador Lisa normally does, but just let us know what we need, if it's a letter or anything you need for us to write. This is definitely a community service that you've been doing it for seven years. You didn't start today. So let us know anything that you need, we'll definitely do it. So um, I, I'm gonna uh, go over to Ambassador Lisa, you first, because I think you'll be leaving, leaving shortly, then Nia, yes. so the, uh, Oliver, by the way, is driving. So um, he won't be able to speak, but I see Moses has uh, connected his audio, which is good. So Ambassador Lisa, over to you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Santos. Thank you so much, Reverend Pam. And uh, thank you in advance, Dr. Santos, for all of the wisdom and knowledge that you will be sharing with us today. So I liked, I, I didn't have anything in particular to ask, but I like the statistics that you started out with, not so much the statistics, but you were saying you're trying to discover if, if suicide is a mental illness or a symptom of a mental illness. If it's a symptom of a mental illness, what are some of the things that would cause us? Thank you very much. Um, all suicidal patients are depressed, but not all, not all depressed patients are suicidal. 
Let's start from there. Uh, okay. suicide, suicide comes as a result of distress. Instead of people will say stress causes suicide. Yes, an accumulation of stress can lead to distress. So suicide is a combination of depression, stress, anxiety, and distress. So it's not all anxiety and depressed situation or stressful states that do uh, in it that you will find suicide. But suicide comes as a result of the person first having be, being distressed and then also uh, having a, a, a low emotional uh, resilience to accumulate shock. Yeah, so we used to talk of shock absorbers. Some people have very good um, shock absorbing skills, whereas mm -hmm. others, yes. the slight issue or worry, being a financial stress, the death of a loved one, or being fired from their job or whatsoever may trigger those uh, uh, instincts to be suicidal. And to be so there's a difference between uh, being suicidal and uh, a suicide attempt. Some people can be suicidal without being necessarily um, uh, having the lethality to commit the suicide. For example, if you're doing a suicide evaluation, you should not consider anyone who has suicidal thought to really have the intent to commit suicide. That's okay. why we talk about suicidal ideation. You may have the idea, but it's not backed by the lethality. The lethality is the roadmap. What plan have you established to commit it? How do you end to end it all? Do you plan on falling on a high rise? Have you bought a cord mm. to go behind the house and tie your neck, a noose around your neck? Have you decided to fall uh, on an incoming railroad? Or have you uh, planned to jump on a highway when the vehicle is moving to dive under an 18 wheeler? Or have you bought a knife or something? So if you have, so suicide, it's really a combination of the idea and the lethality. So the issue is like a mandated reporter of suicide. If you report suicide, law enforcement will ask you the therapist or the psychologist or the counselor if you found a lethality. Because if you find a lethality, then we really say the suicidal ideation plus the lethality may lead to a to the actual commit, committing of suicide. And so the first thing we have to do is to take away the lethality and begin treatment. For example, uh, I've had uh, a client that walked into the office with a pistol and really showed it to me that that night he planned to put, it, put an end to it. So the first thing you have to do is you have to calm the person down you have to talk to the person, you have to do like the CBT, cognitive behavioral therapist, who have to reverse the thought. You have to be welcoming. You have to try to use therapeutic techniques of genuineness, empathy, silent listening, listening, and good communication skills. Show genuineness, on the, try, to, try to understand with that individual from one angle and try not to like, um, make the individual feel that he's is really uh, sorry he's exceptional or he's um um he he is uh he, he those thoughts are not real because you would want to make it like it's something that can happen to anybody anyone everywhere and anyhow so try when you feel you empathize with some of these people and you communicate yes. in good language that some sort of reduces those urges and so what we are trained to do is like, you first of all, uh, try to lure him into submission and uh, following your path, taking into your counseling that you can offer him a cup of water, coffee or tea. Some who may want to take a, a stick of cigarette. Yeah, I've seen some of them, most of them, the one that you should, they want to take a stick of cigarette to calm down because they consider it a coping, a coping mechanism mm -hmm. of which it's not also healthy though. But for the sake of some, uh, uh, skills that may be necessary to calm that individual down, then you can say you want to use the restroom and you're heading straight to call law enforcement so as they can take the weapon. And that individual in the global assessment of functioning scale will not be going home that night. Uh -huh. So I, I need more questions. You have other questions. I don't know. We'll just want to be talking without direction. Right. Thank you. Yes. Uh... Thank you. 
Ambassador Lister, you want to continue or you want me to jump No, in? I just said thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, uh, Brother Santos, uh, uh, let me take this question because I, let me take it off my mind. Is, or oh, as suicidal thoughts in born, is anyone born with those thoughts mm. or it takes time and grows with the lifestyle that the individual is living? That question is a very important question because it now says, it now leads to the most important question of what are the causes of, of suicide or yes. a genetic predisposition. Yeah, progenetic predisposition is also one of the factors that account for suicide. Suicide runs in families. It runs in family lines. Some mm -hmm. families have a history of suicide. Some uh, genetic compositions of certain families uh, have a history of suicide, which means that Suicide is also hereditary, and um, um, but the issue we, we should be we should be looking at suicide primarily as uh, 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 the core, the primary causes of suicide uh, stems from uh, emotion uh, low level of tolerance, low level of tolerance, uh, low level of emotional resilience to shock, uh, inability to cope with life stressful events and situations. Um, um, a drug, drug addiction or substance use, uh, some drug addicts are suicidal. And then you also have um, uh, people who have been having relationship problems, for example, relationship problem, because statistics has proven that men are more, uh, stand a more higher risk of uh, suicide than even women. And most of it is coming from relationship issues. Mm. And talking about that, is there a particular region of the world where suicides are more than in other parts of the world? Yes, um, in in the United States alone, in uh, in 2020, according to the research I did, suicide was the 12th leading cause of death overall in the United States claiming the lives of 45,900 people. So if you look among it, you see that um, uh, suicide is more prevalent among the Caucasian population and, uh, than, the, than the other races of African-American, Asian, and uh, yes. uh, Latinos. Yeah, and my, my, most of the people who took away their lives were males. Mm. So mm. suicide, uh, males stand a higher uh, propensity or a higher uh, chances of committing suicide than, than, than female. And then also adolescent males also stand a higher uh, probability of committing suicide. And then also, it's also, it has also been proven by research that the LGBT community also stand a higher uh, uh, probability of committing suicide because of unacceptability. That said, is there an age group more akin, more, more akin to being suicidal than another age group? Yeah, adult males. Adult males undergoing divorce issues and relationship issues, as well as adolescent males. And among the adolescent males, those who were homosexuals were more uh, in, that, in that bracket than the ordinary uh, heterogeneous adolescents. Yeah, talk about worldwide. Uh, you just talked about the United States. What about worldwide situation? Worldwide situation. Um, uh, I, I, I did. I didn't really research into other countries or other areas or continents. But I think when it comes to African uh, in society, I can tell you that um, uh, in the African society, uh, mostly uh, there were there were particular tribes or villages or areas mm -hmm. that uh, have had history of suicide, which boils to the fact that a genetic predisposition or um, uh, people who have been more using to living together in an environment where suicide is common are also uh, more stand a higher probability of copying suicide. For example, the area where I come from in the Northwest province, uh, we used to talk of the people of uh, Bafut in particular, which is a tribe. Uh, we used to, when we want to refer to people who are suicidal, primarily as we used to grow up, we hear that when a barefoot person takes the court and goes behind the house, know that that person is not coming back. This is what we used to know when we grew up. But in Africa as a whole, I think uh, the people in Africa 
they are more uh, resistant to distresses and they are more resistant to uh, stressors that may push them to suicide because primarily most of the people who commit suicide in Africa are really mental, mental health patients who fall within the classes of bipolar and schizophrenia. I, I, I have a quick comment and question. Uh, uh, by the way, let me welcome uh, Yunani, Yunami from Belgium, you know, and um, we see uh, Moses Strong also um, has um, a comment here. So we're gonna give um, the mic to Moses and Yunami real quick. Uh, uh, Dr. Santos, you said uh, you're talking about the Bafut people. Growing up back home, I only heard of one suicide case, which was years before uh, we were even born. And in, in my tribe, Bali Yonga, anybody who commits suicide, they don't get buried in the village. They take them, they bury them outside of the village, you know, because it's such a taboo. So, oh. uh, yeah, so, so are you saying that when you were growing up, there were, there were, there were cases of you know, suicide, you know? Yes, um, well, there have been many cases of suicide in, um, typically in our regions, uh, the Northwest region. Well, yeah, uh, in Quen, for example, where I come from, there have also been cases of suicide. And in those cases, the, the compound, the family compound is usually seized or there's an injunction put there and everybody has to vacate. Right close to me, where I used to live in my three in Quen, there is one case of suicide there that that compound is still under injunction from the phone, the phone or the chief palace. That, uh, but they but did they the bury family. them in the village or, or no? They don't no, bury when, them. when that when when the suicide occurs and if that victim is behind the house, what happened is they dig the grave. The grave is dug immediately where the person is hanging. They cut the rope without a coffin and without anything, and the person is laid to rest right there and covered. That's yeah. what happens. And then that compound automatically has an injunction whereby the family, the the, the people have to go and do some sacrifices and also do some ancestral uh, pacification. We call it cleansing, cleansing for such not to occur again. Uh, some people, most of uh, psychological researchers, researchers or modern researchers like myself will not like to uh, 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 sympathize or, or condone this kind of behavior because I think that some traditions are unfair in the sense that this family is already grieving of a loss and taking away also their family property may be adding more grief onto them or more desperation to the family. Yeah, that's so, news to me. It means that the different tribes, because in Bali, they don't, they don't seal the compound, but the dead person is not buried in, in the land. They're buried outside, you know. Different, different and, tribes have different ways they handle, they go about it, the secret age. And so, also people shy away from getting married from that family. Mm. Exactly, exactly. So why do they take away the, I'm still trying to figure out, why do they take away the land? Why do they take away their ancestral land? It's a taboo. Uh, it's, it's a taboo. Let, me add, let, me, let me just add to what you just said. In my own community, okay, if somebody dies of suicide, that person will be buried in a high forest, period. Um, the house will not be burned, but the, okay. that corpse will be taken to a high forest and buried forever. No celebration, no gunshot, no yes. money. Yes. A few months, for well, someone commits suicide, the village will punish you for money. So that's money? the tradition. Um, wow. Just to clarify one thing, um, that from what I understand about suicide in men and women, uh, women have more suicidal gesture. Women threaten suicide all the time, but men complete suicide more than women. So the yeah. act is more common in men, but the gesture or plan or the drama part of it is more common in women. So basically women talk and then men act. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Women threaten suicide, but mm. men follow through. Without, yeah. with, without even threatening. So they don't even give people the option to even try to, to, to assist them. They just do it. Yes. Uh, okay. If we can hear from Moses, uh, Moses, kindly unmute yourself. He posted something. Uh, Reverend, Reverend Palm, Reverend Palm, I'm, I'm glad that you brought in Moses. Moses is a home-based psychologist and works with me or partners with me in the home front in my organization. Which is awesome. NGO. Awesome. So let's hear from him. And yeah. see him, hopefully. 
<laughs> oh, sorry, my yes. background was the best for now. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. I'm giving Dr. Santos, my mentor. And okay. uh, it's quite an interesting topic. Uh, let me begin from the African perspective, especially um, the country Cameroon, where I'm from, and the Northwest in particular. But you have a Chinese yeah. name, Chong Chong. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when people don't see me, they think I'm a Chinese. They don't see okay. me. Well. <laughs> but that name, is, that name is actually Oko. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from what the person just said, and what other 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 uh, speakers have spoken so far, especially those from Northwest, they, they're all turned around the same thing. All the, the injunctions that seem to be negatively impacting on the communities when a, a member of a family uh takes away his life through suicide has both positive and negative the positive aspect is that it restrains people from even attempting to do it because they read the consequences of what might happen i'm, I'm about trying to analyze areas why we might not have the level of suicide cases in africa or especially in the, especially in the in the cameroons as in the western world we we live a very serious communal life. And Africans don't live alone. Talk less of people from the, the grass fields of Cameroon. Mm -hmm. You are, in fact, part of a community. And you are bound by the customs to operate. Mm -hmm. And your problem becomes everybody's problem. You can bear with me, here mm -hmm. we don't eat. You don't dig a grave. When you are, when you are bereaved, the whole community does do everything for you. You just stand and see things being done. So the level of the the, the 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 stress you go through when you lost someone or some, something is highly reduced compared to what's obtained in the Western world. Consequently, and the levels of suicide need to drop because people get, get through challenges, but with a strong communal effort that backs them up in their troubles. Maybe strong social networks, growth, yes, family. community support, yes. yes. They begin to offer these people with challenges some levels of protection that reduces the ideation or even passing through the, the, the lethality of suicide by taking lives. It becomes so interesting that this happens. But when it comes again to the taboos, like in Oku, where I come from, when you commit suicide, you are buried. The most common suicide we have in Oku is hanging. Is what? Get, is what? Uh, Hanging. Hanging, but not by hanging. Oh, what a painful yeah. way to die. Using a cord. And yeah. when, they, uh, when these people do that, they are buried on the spot. You just get the rope from the tree where you where you where you um where you hung yourself, and then they dig a pit below that tree and you fall there, they're just covering. That wow. tree is cursed. No family person can build on such a place again. And then the stigma that comes with it that follows your generation, your, your, your children, your wife, and your brothers, brothers yes. might, might even make it difficult for people to want to even get involved in marital links with such a family. That's and true. So, so these taboos now begin to set risk, begin to restrain, to restrain people from taking certain action, even in the middle of severe depression and, and severe stress. You will begin to control certain actions because they know the impact of those actions in the future, if they carry, if they pass through, if they, if they start to act immediately as per what their emotions are telling them, I'm talking about suicide. So, so I think that what these three elements are minimal or more, might be reason for why uh, suicide levels are dropping here, and more over that way. Good, good like contribution. This. You are right because it, the the consequences and the, it, the the fact that the family will be ostracized, those serve as deterrence for people to. Uh, uh, you know, uh, commit suicide. And that's not even something that is a thought, but I don't know, Ambassador, uh, uh, Dr. Goji, please clarify something because Ambassador Lisa posted on the chat box that in Africa, women talk about suicide, the men actually commit the act. Is that just in Africa or is general? Um, suicide is not, talk about, is not common in Africa, period. Okay, so uh, maybe Ambassador Lisa control, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, I thought, I thought he said in Africa, I'm sorry. No. I thought no, it's not Western common in Africa I'm... at all. But in America, oh. I will see in my office, I will see 10 women coming to say they want to kill themselves as opposed to one man. 
-hmm. But at the end of the year, I may see three or four men committing suicide and one woman committing suicide. Okay, so Ambassador so, Lisa is in America, not Africa. So, uh, then um, I have a question for people from Indop uh, about the hanging and suicide in Indop. If somebody commits suicide in the living room, hang on the ceiling, how do they bury him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's a good question. <laughs> All right, Dr. Santos, I'm from Bali. Not the Bali in Dop, you know. By the way, in case you're wondering, Dr. Ogoji is a Cameroonian, you know. Even though he, he, he spends more time now in, in Nigeria, but he he went to Ashing to St. Beats. I have no idea about Bali. But no, I we're talking about Ndop. Ndop. He asked okay. about Ndop. Uh, you know, the, when people have a history of migration from Ndop. So I think mm. what, what obtains in Quen will also obtain in, in Ndop. Because, mm. yes, then when people have a migratory history from Ndop. So what happened is that um, the bottom line is that wherever that person has committed suicide, even if it's inside the house or wherever, they, they, they're going to cut that corpse from the way it's hanging and it must fall into the ground. So they're going to dig right there That's and right. bury that individual right there. So even if it's in a living room, then the, the people cannot stay in the house. They are not taking, they are not moving that corpse away from where the, the, the sacrilege has happened. Blood of mm -hmm. Jesus. So it, it will really source. take a wicked person to commit suicide inside the house. Yes. Um, but in, in, in our tradition, there are some people who are buried in the house. Uh, even if the grave is dug outside, like, for example, my granddad, who was a member of the uh, Quifon, the Quifon in the palace, which is a right. traditional, we call it Mumba, or the traditional uh, society, secret society. He was buried, uh, although the grave was dug outside the house, but they made sure that the grave went into the house. Oh, no. Now, yeah. Yeah, Bali, they were buried outside the house, not inside. I mean, are people living in that house? There are people who are buried in the house. But are there people oh. living in the house where the, bed, the dead person was buried? Yes, of course. The successor takes over the house and blood, it's okay. Blood, blood of Jesus. <laughs> well, well, Reverend Pam, this is not suicide. It's not death by suicide. It's I normal understand. death I, and I, the I, family I, tradition of, of largest that the person be buried indoors. We, we, have, some. We, we, have, some. we have similar situations in Libya Lamp where nobles and paramount chiefs are not buried outside. They are okay. buried in the house. In the house. Yeah. Oh, oh, this, this is my yes, first time of, of hearing that. I, I know it's not a people who die, who die by suicide. I'm just, I can't even yeah. imagine uh, living in a house. My problem is not that they are buried in the house. The challenge I'm having is people are living in that same house with a dead person buried in there. That's a cemetery. Wherever you bury somebody is a cemetery. <laughs> But, but, our, I Reverend Pam, but almost, almost all our African homes where we do not take the dead bodies to the church, to the, to the public cemetery, we, 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 we practice the burial behind the houses. Behind uh, the example, house. Yeah, for behind inside. our houses. For example, uh, my own house, my own compound where I come from, I can count that we have seven graves. I, I, I know in our compound, my parents were buried in the back of the house, the family yeah, compound. Yeah, I'm the not, I'm not, that, I don't have a problem with that. I'm talking about being buried inside a house, you know, and then people are living in that same house. Yeah, notables yes. are buried, some notables are buried in their house. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Well, okay, Dr. Santos, let's, let's address these issues, the, 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 the recent rise in, uh, in, in suicide, by women it, because either a man cheated on them or a man left them or please let's address that yes um uh, we have seen uh, because the reason why this topic came up was because uh, social media has been going crazy for the past weeks where we saw not not whites not asians not latinos but our own sisters and brothers and uh, we did some investigations, which we found out a little bit of information, uh, although some were rumored, but 
we, we, we based some of our discussions to on Romans in order to help the community. Mm -hmm. Because if we hear that a lady brought a man from Africa and the man decided to disappoint her to the extent that the lady killed herself or a care worker who is a male impregnated the client and is scared of prosecution and decided to commit suicide. So we are asking ourselves that Cameroonians abroad or Africans abroad seem to have picked up the tradition of doing the same thing, which accounted in 2020 for 45,900 United States citizens or US residents taking their lives. So if we do not take some measures, we may be living from three cases to five cases to 10 cases to 15, and very soon we'll be having hundreds of cases. God forbid. And um, one of the things, one of the primary uh, causes of suicide is exposure to people or groups of persons who commit suicide. Hmm. If you live in a society where suicide is rampant, there's a probability that you may take it as a normality to end your life through suicide. Hmm. For example, if we, because if this is not the reason, we shouldn't see a Cameroonian who uh, commits a crime by impregnating a client uh, of which he knows that uh, under normal medical laws, you are not supposed to have any relationship with sexual relationship with your client. But instead of facing the law and having some jail time, and maybe the, the judge may use a discretion of just giving you some limited time. And if he's a first, first offender, there's a probability that there are always some probation granted to first offenders. And uh, instead of that, you decide to end it all. Or you may, might, wait. there were other possibilities of uh, uh, going away from that environment forever, you know, mm -hmm. although it's not recommended for you to, to run away from a crime, but face it. But then you decided to end your life, leaving your family in Africa, leaving your other children, and um, because of the, uh, being scared of prosecution. Or a man comes over and disappoints a lady and the lady takes away her life. I mean, these are things that we know that exist in this society and account relationship issues accounts for why most men take away their lives uh, primarily, as I said, and then amongst the adolescents, uh, the LGBT community, uh, you teenagers and all those also have a high probability uh, 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 and, and bullying but let, let me say this bullying bullying, uh, yeah, bullying yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah let me say this dr sanders i'm not familiar with any specific case even with the guy that impregnated you know but this is my thing these are two different situations in this case in the case of a guy impregnating a client he's the perpetrator in the case of the the woman who killed herself because the man or boyfriend you know, cheated on her or abandoned her. She was a victim. So it, it, to me, it doesn't even make, no man is worth killing yourself over and no woman is worth killing yourself over. And exactly. no situation, no condition is worth taking your own life because what is what do you stand to gain by killing yourself? You're not gonna make heaven, you're going straight to hell because you, you took a life, even though it was your own life. You did not give yourself life. Your parents brought you into this world Genesis 2, 7 said, God created man out of dust and breathed into him the breath of life. So either way, you don't have any authority to take any life, including your life. For the guy that if he had families and then he has another child coming in, he's killing himself. The child did not choose to be, to be brought. You know, he, he did not control himself. So we, we, we need to educate our people and give them options. You know, I, I, and Dr. Santos, I would like for you to share hotlines that are available in the chat box where people are feeling, uh, I keep my phone on 24 seven because I've had people that have been suicidal calling for prayers, you know? So yeah. what, I'm, what I'm, I'm saying is that we need, when we come back from the top of the hour, let's focus on alternatives to suicide. We know the problem is there, but let's focus and our people should not adopt bad habits from the West. Suicide is not something that we do in our culture. So they Reverend don't, they Pam, yes. Reverend Pam, it's good for us to educate our people about the warning signs. Good, mm -hmm. and also, and also alternatives. Signs. 
Yes. Yeah, the warning signs are very important. For example, you may be sitting with someone, you, you hardly know who is going to end it all. You hardly yeah. know. But there are some warning signs or red flags when you hear from someone talking of wanting to die, wanting to kill himself or kill others. You should be careful. You should try to uh talk to that someone to inform other people or a specialist in that area when you talk of when you listen to someone talking about feeling empty or hopeless or having no reason to leave you were here so those kind of discussions like i i can't take it anymore i'm mm -hmm. done with this uh i think as to end it right now what is, what is this uh, life even what is this life even yeah i wish i were i were gone if you hear someone feeling trapped or feeling that there is no solution to anything or feeling unbearable emotional or physical pain or talking about the, uh, uh, being in burden to uh, being a burden to others or withdrawing from family and friends and living antisocially or isolatorily you should be careful or he's giving away his valuable possessions uh, sharing his things when someone starts to start sharing the valuable possessions, you should be careful or saying goodbye to friends and family for just no reason or putting affairs in order such as making a will, making a will. Uh, mm -hmm. Just get up and start registering in life insurance uh, policies and try to start sharing things and you should be careful or taking great risks that could lead to death, like going for scuba diving, uh, going for some risky kind of sports or other things or talking or thinking about death often. All these uh, signs, when you hear about them or you see someone just get up and start doing those things, please bring it. If you are not a specialist or an expert or a healthcare professional, just try to hint even your pastor or your uh, family head or somebody that something is happening here, which I can't add up because but, I- But, 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 but Dr. That. Nicholas, Dr. Santos, yes, uh, all that is good. And I'm glad we are sharing the symptoms. So uh, uh, after the top of the hour, we'll talk about authenticity. but this is what I wanted to also share. There are people that commit suicide with no warning signs. Yes. Uh, for, for, uh, I mean, uh, uh, well, uh, let me not mention his name. There, there was a, a famous comedian yes. in this country that was making people laugh up until the point where he killed himself. And the whole world was shocked that he did that. He was making people laugh, yet he was dying inside. You're talking about people, even people who are surrounded by family members may still be going through. So not, not all of them show those signs. They are hidden Hidden uh, 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 people are suffering in silence. You know, mm -hmm. not all of that's good, but I'm just saying that let's also address the fact that there are people that would either snap and do it, yeah, or, who will not, mm -hmm. or, 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 or will not fit into that mold or the general category. We this usually in psychological was... literature says that in any research or any studies, there's a margin of error or, or yeah. what we call the outlier, the outlier. Okay. Those yes. extra percentages fall in the outlier uh, yes. of the curve. So or the four, the four within the margin of error, those whose behaviors become unpredictable, that they mm -hmm. don't follow the general rule or they don't show manifest all these symptoms that we are talking about. Yes. Yeah. Somebody like Anthony Bodu, I like calling names. You know, that guy, I envied his life so well. Okay. He was enjoying, traveling the whole world, eating food, I know. and killed himself because of a woman. Excuse oh, me. Oh, it was because of a woman. <laughs> Oh, yes, his girlfriend jitter him and he dictated himself. Oh, my it's God. It's just me. The beautiful ones are not yet born. <laughs> you, you, you're you're right. <laughs> and the handsome ones are not yet born. I agree. <laughs> in every, Dr. In Dr. Every... Ogoji, Dr. Ogoji just mentioned one of my favorite books The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born. <laughs> so, that's the title of a book. Yes. A Peseta. A Peseta. A Peseta, a peseta yeah. book. Yeah. I read that oh, book. Wow. Peseta, yeah. So, so mm -hmm. during during any 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 intervention or any clinical visit, all of us practitioners, be you a nurse, a doctor, a psychiatric doctor, a clinical psychologist, or social worker, we are always asked to ask this most important question. Uh, you must ask the question to: Are you are you thinking about killing yourself? Uh, you must check for all other things that are not possibly the presenting situation. For example. All patients, be them suffering from headache, stomach problem, you must ask them how they feel, how they think, how about the meaning of life, 
how healthy, how stress, the stressors that they have been going through. Is it job loss? Are you, are you sleeping in a comfortable home? Uh, do you think, have you ever thought about killing yourself? There's more probability, there's more research that proving that asking somebody in hospital whether he wants to kill himself or not will not increase any risk of the person killing himself. Instead, the person will appreciate that you really think about him so we always ask those questions and to for you to show concern to people that you really care about them is you ask this question you keep them safe you prove that you can be there for them by effectively listening because okay. the only listening to someone and paying attention which we, we, we put it we call it uh, uh, congruence empathy and effective listening there are some communications that are not verbal there are non-verbal communication like oh, yes. eye contact uh, body language listening body language, uh, other communication cues. You get connected to the people. You stay connected to them and listen to them. And there are some kind of gestures you could make to make that person feel uh, humane and deceased from any thoughts. Like, for example, nodding your head and um, uh, uh, paraphrasing, you know, doing some other techniques that the person will feel that at least he he really has some, see some meaning in life. And then there's also three other uh, strategies that we are taught to to try to uh, whenever we find somebody has those ideas or has a plan, you have to uh, use our bed Ellis's three three A's, which is uh, making the person see the importance of life. We call it universal life acceptance, making the person see the importance of others, like father and siblings in his life. We call it universal others acceptance and. Uh, uh, we also say self, uh, yeah, self and potentials, life and others. So there are three A's. Thank you. Mm. That being said, where do we go from here? What should we be doing that we are not doing? Um, we are not doing enough when it comes to our own community. We are here for Africa uh, Online Corporation. We are not doing enough, like when I would say a recommendation I've always made is, we have medical health centers, but we don't have behavioral health centers. That's true. Behavioral health centers are needed in all prisons, schools, and also in all counties and uh, even uh, uh, regions. Because if we neglect mental health, when I look my country, Cameroon, we don't have a mental health policies. Because when I was doing my research, I had to go to Nigeria to Aro Psychiatric Hospital. Aro Psychiatric Hospital in Abuka, Abiekota is the United is the is the World Health Organization uh, research center for mental illness. They have Aro and they have Yaba, so they are advanced. Ghana also have so they, they usually get all the grants from the World Health Organization for research in mental illness. In Cameroon, we have Santre Jamo in Yaoundé, and our policy in Cameroon is that medical doctors, which are general practitioners in the medical field, physicians should venture into mental health with reservations. Which means if a country tells the physicians who are not experts in a field to venture into it with reservations means people will be killed, accidents will happen. Experts need to be trained in psychiatry, clinical psychology, licensed social work, licensed nurse practitioners who should only be working not in the general practitioner area, but should head behavioral health centers. Our community is fast becoming close to that of the Western world that we should expand in certain areas which will help to curb some of these rising uh, illnesses. For example, suicide, which used to be a taboo, which was unheard of, is now on the, on the search in our own communities. So that's the first thing that I will reply to Mr. Songle fact that what is it that we have to do that we are not doing? Yeah, 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 Dr. Thank Santos, you. that is good. We have um, uh, in less than two minutes to top of the hour. I want you to expand on this one. We'll come back and alternatives. This is the thing. It's good to tell them to do that, but a lot of training needs to be done because the, the, the current uh, 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 staff or uh, personnel in those uh, uh, practices are not trained in this. So that's something that needs to be included in the training. But besides that, simultaneously, there has to be sensitization. Like we're doing this show, but even having billboards that, that talk about mental health, 
or suicidal thoughts, having in these clinics just uh, information, just information for people that are walking there and sitting. It's not like the doctor is, is, is talking to them about that, but just having that information. So there's awareness, raising awareness about the problem. Those are some of the simple things that can be done right now while we're trying to uh, uh, train these uh, 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 professionals or, or, or offer these specialties and subspecialties that don't yet exist. Yes, we live in a global village. Somebody can sit in their village in, 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 in a small neighborhood in Quende and, and with a click of a mouse, they will see, they will hear about somebody making a, a, a suicide glamorous. You understand what I'm saying? Things that it never used to, and you will never know that that, that, that impact happened. So let, we're at the top of the hour. Let me, um, let me play the anthem and then we'll come back, drink some water, Dr. Santos. Thank you. Africa. Oh, no. Africans, Africans for Africa. 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 Africans have many bright ideas. If only you let us share. If you really want to know my history, please come sit down, listen to my story. God gave us a wisdom. He guides our footsteps, makes us shine and transform. Hey, as one people with so many cultures, yet indeed we are one. Stand up, Africans. Let's say Africa. Let us all unite behind Africa Online Media Corporation. Stand up, Africa. Let's save Africa It's time to come together Promote awareness, progress and solution hey, Africans, Africans for Africa Africans, Africans for Africa Africans, Africans for Africa All Africans can rally for a common cause To believe without judgment in what our brother does to identify and resolve our challenges to allow each other's ideas without regard to standards as one people with so many cultures yes it did be a one stand up africans for africa Stand up, Africans. Let's save Africa. Let us empower Africans in and out of Africa. Stand up, Africans for Africa. Africa Online Media Corporation. That's a good way to start. Stand up, Africans. Let's save Africa. Sources we need to benefit our society. Oh. For everyone, if we believe prosperity for Africans, if we believe medical facilitation for Africans, if we believe stand up, stand up, Africa is for Africa, Africa Online Media Corporation. 
Constitution. That's a good way to start. Stand up, Africans. Let's see Africa. Africa is a cradle of civilization. The motherland. Stand up, Africans. For Africa. We were enslaved not because we were weak, but because of our hospitality. Stand up, Africans. Let's see Africa. Jump on the Africa online miracle jet. Don't be left behind. Stand up, Africans. For Africa. Together we shall succeed. Together we will win. Stand up, Africans. Let's see Africa. We are writing our own story. The truth and we shall tell it to the world. Stand up, Africans. For Africa. No more lies. Africans own Africa. No more lies. Africans own Africa. That's our anthem. We own full rights to that song. Are uh, written under the anointing, um, you know, by yours truly and composed by Jerry Cleo, D, aka DJ Skipper. Well, um, it's a good thing Dr. Ogoji is here. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, Black Health uh, uh, next week or Black Health Matters. You know, um, next this month is national minority health month so we're going to be talking about that next week and uh, our in-house and chief medical advisor dr kingston ogoji will be our special guest so i want to also make a quick announcement if i go to nia song since ambassador lisa is not here you know um this is our uh, uh, sister organization, Africa Brain Bank. The fourth annual summit and charity ball is coming up September the 1st through the 4th in Los Angeles, California. So you go to the website, africasbrainbank.org. Tickets are open. And to purchase the ticket, you just click purchase ticket. It will take you to the ticket link. 131 days to go. It gives you information about the event. The theme is STEM. Africa's uh, Gateway to Economic Freedom and Power. That's the, uh, the address. We're going to be at the LAX Hyatt Regency Hotel. It's a plush hotel, right, on Terminal 1. You know, they gave us a good rate. And then Friday night, we're going to have a business to investor to business market. That's an organic name. If you hear it anywhere, they copied it from us. We have uh, um, uh, more than 150 entrepreneurs and investors coming from abroad. You know, uh, in May, we're going to have uh, some of the coordinators on this show to talk about it. But go and register your business on Saturday morning, IT Symposium, Sunday morning, Billionaire Breakfast Brunch. So it gives you the details of the tickets. Tickets are open on March, the uh, on March 31st. The prices are going to go up by 20%. Reason being, there's so much stuff happening in LA that weekend. Even the hotel is going to raise the price. So late commerce are going to end up paying 20% more than what the, the, um, the early commerce. So purchase your tickets now. It's a must attend. And then, of course, you know, we have um, uh, our uh, ongoing Operation Borho 55. You know, uh, we're also looking for grant writers because, you know, the donations have not been coming in. We need to sink a borehole in Kenya and Cameroon, and then we'll continue to the other 55 nations uh, 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 remaining 55 nations on the continent. Uh, this, um, yes, we do have somebody that gives us $50 a month, but that is going to take a long time for us to be able to raise $22,000 to sink a solar power borehole. The last one we did in Sierra Leone, the engineer waived his fees. So he used the 11,000, I think 100 or 200 that we raised to sink the solar power borehole and provide electricity and water for. 30,000 people in Kerini district in Sierra Leone. So Kenya and Cameroon, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Santos, there's a place called Bamu Kumbi. I had never heard of it till I saw the video and I wept. If you see the slimy water that this clinic, that, that serves six villages, Awing, Valley Kumba, uh, the name is on the video. I'm not gonna play it now, but 
um, they see an average of 400 patients a month and they don't have any water close by and they have to climb the hills and the water is slimy. So uh, Nia, so I'm gonna hand over to you to speak to our French people, then we'll come back and uh, uh, I would like for Dr. Santos to, to talk about uh, 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 remedies or solutions or preventions of suicide or alternatives. Nia Song. Merci, Madame. Brièvement, dire uh, l'un des projets de, très, très important à Africa Online TV, c'est la, la déduction d'eau pour le centre de, de, de santé développé en Afrique. On a commencé au Sierra Leone, on a euh, construit là-bas. Il y a déjà, ça existe dans un centre de, de santé développé. Ça fonctionne, ça c'est une population de 6 000 avec le, le centre de santé. Mais maintenant, on cherche un peu de sous pour construire aussi au, Sierra, au, au Cameroun et au Kenya des de, de points d'adduction d'eau portable. L'eau, c'est la vie, on continue à chanter. On vous invite de donner quelque chose Va sur notre site web www.africaonlinetv.org pour donner, pour faire votre contribution. Merci beaucoup d'avance pour ce que vous allez donner pour nous aider à construire ce point d'adduction d'eau portable. Cela dit, un mois, au mois de septembre, il y a un événement de Africa's Brain Bank à Los Angeles. Ça sera en septembre. Viens sur notre site web voir ce que nous avons posté là-bas et vous allez quand même aussi voir ce que Africa's Brain Bank a fait et va faire en septembre. Merci beaucoup et maintenant on va retourner sur notre sujet du jour, du jour le, le suicide, suicides, those are the, that is the topic of the day. So, uh, Reverend Pam, you had a question for Dr. Santos. Uh, yes, I, I wanted him to address a couple of things. One, how do we, suicide prevention, to or remedies or, or solutions or alternatives to suicide. Our goal is to make sure suicide never becomes an option. Yes, uh, Reverend Pam, that is very, very important because for us to identify the definition, the red flags, the causes, we must talk about the interventions and the prevention, uh, both from the things we have to do and both what we, the medical experts, will do as finishing. Uh, the first thing is safety planning. Uh, personalized safety planning has been shown to help reduce suicide thoughts and actions. Patients work with a caregiver to develop a plan that describes ways to limit access to lethal means such as firearms, pills, or poison, which means taking away the lethality, taking away the object that you will use to commit this issue. This, this suicide. Uh, for example, if the individual had those cords, uh, accumulated medications that may swallow or firearm that he will use to hurt himself or herself, we have to go poison or poison, a rat poison, all those things that are within your house. We have to eliminate all of them. And so when we eliminate them now, then we will have to like make phone calls all the time to uh, talk with that person and develop an intervention plan. For example, I will sign a suicide contract with my patients, a suicide contract. A suicide contract basically means that I will tell the individual that anytime he has those urges or he feels as those urges are coming back for the person to kill himself, make sure he gives me a call and make sure he sees me to talk to me before he takes any move. So that's a suicide contract. Or suicide so, agreement. Wait, wait, let me ask you something. Why yes. is it not called a suicidal thought contract instead of a suicide contract? Because just the name it looks like, you know, the suicide has happened already. Well, uh, yes, you may be doing some modification and critique, but we call it in the field. No, it's just a contract. question. It's just a yeah. question. I'm not criticizing. No, it's good. It's good. It's a positive critique because we call it a suicide contract. So we may need to modify it to be a suicide thought or suicide please, ideation. Please, please tell them to modify it to suicidal thought contract. Yes. Okay. So uh, I'll do. Okay. So 
there are other multiple interventions that we do, especially when it comes to the psychological and psychiatric, we do when it comes to talk therapy. We have two basic forms of talk therapies that you usually work for these patients. We have cognitive behavioral therapy, because usually we always look at this to be the thought, the thought process we are thinking affects your belief, and that belief is misleading you, or we talk of having a maladaptive thought, a maladaptive belief and thought which has disorganized your pattern of thinking. And so if we can redress this in therapy by instilling on, upon you positive thoughts, we call that process cognitive reframing, uh, teaching skills like positive self-talk, uh, replacing those uh, bad thoughts with good thoughts, with rational and healthy thoughts. So the thought pattern will be reversed and mm -hmm. the suicidal thought may go away. And then also there is dialectic, dialectical behavioral therapy, which has been shown to reduce suicide behaviors in adolescents. Uh, the DBT has also shown to reduce the rate of suicide in adults, especially those with borderline personality disorder a mental illness that is characterized by an ongoing pattern of varying mood, uh, self-image and behavior that often results in impulsive actions and problems in relationship. So a therapist trained with a DBT can help the person reorganize their feelings or actions and then upset the disruptive thoughts and replace them with healthy or teach them some coping skills and strategies of dealing with the stress or the stressors when they, when they come on. Then we also have for the medication part, uh, Dr. Ogoji will tell you that according to research, there have been one medication that has proved to be very effective that they call clozapine. Clozapine has been very, very effective in eliminating suicide, although uh, the patient uh, or the family will have to research on the side effects. One thing with our medications, the psychiatric medication is that they have many, many side effects. For example, those who are depressed may be looking for an antidepressant, which is the okay. selecting, select, selective uh, ser serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. Yes. And uh -huh. most of them also have, they also do promote suicide. Some of, most of them have a side effects that they may also cause suicide. So we that, have to be careful. I, more, that, that is very true. Just yes, like the antidepressants, a side effect is a, a depression. This, uh, this medication, suicide thoughts is a side effect. So. so so we are very careful when it comes to medication. But however, talk therapy or seeing a psychologist is always very, very important. Or in not only that, there are also other community support systems and networks that works. For example, in families, in our African tradition and other traditions, there are families, there are churches and other resources that you may use. What about exercise, sports, music, yoga, and other things? Because we are now in the world of holistic medicine whereby everything, eating good food is therapy. So oh, yeah. um, even during coronavirus, Reverend Pam said it, that we should knock ourselves with some good pepper soup and a <laughs> chew soup. Do you remember? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, taking some ginger or local remedies, which, <laughs> which made us to survive very, to, to, to take it and we are very strong today, thank God. Uh, so um, the uh, same yeah, thing- Yeah, coronavirus suicide. cannot stand Cameroon pepper. <laughs> so same is with suicide. We have to look for all other alternatives that work to deal with this, uh, this dragon. So that's all I have to say when it comes to uh, suggestions about interventions uh, that we can take. Thank you. Thank you. Not, uh, not Dr. Santo. Yeah, okay, you go ahead. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, because I wanted to, to see what uh, Dr. Ogoji and uh, Moses had to add, but real quick, you know, I wanted to just say, to those who may be thinking about it, or even to the to the uh, professionals, always keep in mind that this is not for the people who are having those suicidal thoughts. Keep in mind that some of those thoughts are, are, have demonic origins. You know, you, you say somebody said they heard a voice telling them to go kill themselves or to go kill somebody or to because the the the, the devil operates in the mind. We've always heard that the mind is a, a, a mind is a devil's workshop. But that that because the mind is the center of reasonings, emotions, feelings, will, thoughts. So those things come. But we need to let this also encourage people that no matter how bad things are for you, somebody has it worse. 
You know, the one said that, I don't know who said this, but that somebody was complaining that they didn't have shoes until they saw somebody who didn't have feet. So there's always somebody who is going through worse things than you are. You know, so don't think that you are the one, uh, why you or you are the one carrying the entire world on your head. There's always somebody who has a will to live, who is not suicidal, that who is going through more things than you. So we, let's just stress that suicide is not an option. There's nothing to benefit from it, both for the victims and their loved ones and the community. So uh, Nias, I just wanted to see what uh, Dr. Ogoji and Moses said before we do our last round. Yeah, Dr. Ogoji, please. Well, um, I always tell my patients that um, no matter how bad the world is, it's better, it's better to be above the ground. That's right. Because above the ground, it can only get better. That's true. It can only get better. So when there's life, there's a way it can only get better. That's but remember right. that most of our patients don't have what we call insights. Yeah. Insight means they don't know what's going on. They're mm -hmm. acting on what their heart, what their heart says, and not what their brain says. Mm -hmm. So you try to separate. What does the mind tell you? You have to say, is it coming from your mind or from your head? Mm -hmm. Coming from your mind, think twice. Coming from your head, then you can see logic in what you do. Exactly. So um, it's a tough situation. Um, and I think that um, the problem we have is that most people have not gone through tough times. Mm -hmm. You know, you wake up in the morning, you have breakfast, you have lunch, you have dinner, mm -hmm. you have no food. You go to go out there to the cafeteria. To, to food, or food bank, or food, food bank, bank and get food. food. Mm -hmm. So you want to die? The ambulance take you to the hospital and they give you all the attention you want. Mm -hmm. And then you go. So people don't build the resistance to withstand stress. Stress. And stress is part of life. Mm -hmm. And you only get worse. Trust me. And not to digress, they are thinking of four day school in America now. Some places are trying four days schooling for children. Yeah, yeah. Europe is already doing that. Yeah. So they are making life. Easier and easier. I'm not saying nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that if you don't have the resistance to withstand stress, that if you have a little bit of stress, you say, my world is coming to an end. Mm -hmm. So all I tell my patients, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Yeah. And then I tell them, you know, you are the most important person in this world because if you think you're not That's important, true. if somebody kills you now, your mom, your brother, your sister will come. Mm -hmm. If you have no family, your community will come. That's right. So people care about you if you don't care about yourself. Exactly. In that way, we we'll let them open up and let them be your friend. Let them be your friend. I mean, I work in a clinic whereby half of my patients are homeless. Wow. So half of my patients are homeless. So um, every year we do homeless memorial whereby we list all the names of the homeless People who died the year before, because they die a lot during the winter. Oh, wow. We we'll, we'll bring food, we we'll bring uh, drinks, we we'll do various ceremonies for them. We we'll invite the city council to come. We we'll call their name one by one. After awesome. each name, we we'll mention, we we'll take a minute silence for them and we we'll pray for them. We we'll oh. wish them well and say goodbye to them because we are their family. So that's this true. is our clinic as their family. So um, it's not the end, but it we continue to happen. Uh, we have to realize that the defense mechanism to prevent suicide is becoming weaker and weaker, and people are acting based on what their mind says, not what their head says. If you suppose your mind from your head, you would, you act reasonably. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Moses. Thank you, sir. Uh, as for me, my I would think that awareness is primordial. But most of the issues we have with suicide, be it in schools, like as what is obtained in our country here, is that children don't know the intensity of what they are doing. Like some of them, when they are being caught up after an attempted suicide, they say they didn't know. When they start knowing that they had the potential to overcome the little things that could have made them take their lives away, they show proof of ignorance. And I think the issue that we need to do to put more on is awareness on these type of issues, especially in terms of emergency. I'm, I'm here talking about Cameroon in particular, I'm, I'm home-based, and awareness becomes primordial. In fact, I believe strongly that awareness has reduced suicide among 
the survivors of the crisis. I believe so much because yes. people have gone through just terrible things, but it took awareness to prepare people to face those challenges without going to extremes. They're yeah. losing their potentials, yeah. So I think we can reinforce our awareness sessions, be it in the families or in schools, because something that Dr. Santos mentioned there, which is very important, is learned suicide behavior. Mm -hmm. Children have learned some of those behaviors and think it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when, when you just hear that a child took away his life because, it, because he failed GCE, the other one learned, okay, fine. I'm oh my God. Kind of so it becomes oh, a PhD. No. So, so I think awareness is very important, especially in schools, but most importantly at homes, especially in your in, in the Western world where you are based. Mm -hmm. You might have ever, ever to have the opportunity to have it. I mean, we have community life, so we can easily share, make awareness mm -hmm. in church, in Jangi houses, and so on. But it might not be the very case over there. I I I stand to be corrected. But what the families should take on themselves to prepare the family for eventual problems, like how to manage them when they come. But there will be a time of emergency, there will be a time of stress, there will be a time of depression, it might come. But how do we navigate through that storm, through that psychological storm without harming ourselves? That, this can only come through awareness. So I think um, yes. awareness to me remains primordial. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Reverend Pam. You want us to take a round of the table at this time? Oh yeah, we have five minutes, yeah. I'll mm -hmm. go back to Dr. Ogoji, please give us your last word before you close shop today on this program. Again, my last word is always the same. A dead person has no right. A dead <laughs> person has no future. Mm -hmm. A dead person belongs to the owls and the maggots to, to munch and feast on them. That's true. When there's life, there is hope. Yes. It's always better out there. It's, it's, it's always better above the ground than below the ground. Awesome. Rise before you act stupidly. You yeah. are loved by your family, your community, your friends, and your doctors. So come to us, we're here to help you. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much, Dr. Ogoji. Always very, very straight to the point. Now, Moses, I know you've said almost everything, but I know there's always a last word. What would you say is your last word for today's broadcast? My last word is that we are all born with the potential to overcome stress. Awesome. But it is when we believe that that we are breaking limits, that we reach a threshold, and they will lose even confidence in the in the in the, in the God-given potentials that were made to help us survive. When those things happen, we take we take the negative side and we we'll, we'll fail and we we'll crash. So I think if people can remember that they are built and wired with the potential to overcome any form of stress and depression without taking away their life, it will be a great thing. Because what psychologists do, it, they only come to reinforce that potential. Yes. They only come to reinforce that energy that you have, that 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 activates your reason for living, your your reason to love to live again. And then you, you survive, not because the psychologist gave you any magic. It just came in to reinforce what you have as energy to survive, that you thought you didn't have. So I think people should be trained to know that they have the power to overcome in a challenge, no matter how things might look like proving contrary to it, but uh, believing in your potentials to overcome a challenge, to mm -hmm. overcome a stormy, a psychological storm is just too great. Believing in potentials to overcome is very important. We should believe in ourselves first that we can live through a problem without committing suicide. Mm -hmm. It will be something great when we already have to believe. Thank you very much, Thank Moses, you. and uh, contributions, please. Anytime you can come in, always feel free to come in. We are a free Thank forum you. and we welcome everyone. Uh, Reverend Pam, is it your turn? Yes? Yeah, yes. You know, um, Dr. Santos, thank you so much. Dr. Goji, thank you. And Brother Moses, thank you for zooming in from the continent. I, I want to just encourage our parents, whether you are single, a single mother or single father or the, both parents, take time to know what's going on with your children. There are parents who are living in the same house with drug dealers they don't know, drug users they don't know, with people that are doing horrible things. There are, there are young people that have killed themselves because of cyberbullying or because one, one of their classmates told them, oh, you are in so much pain, just take your life, you know, teach your parents a lesson. You know, peer pressure, 
all kinds of things. Know what is going on with your children. Know their friends. I'm not saying invade their privacy, but let me tell you, you know, you, are, you brought them into this where you're responsible for them. Proverbs 22, 6 say, train up a child the way they should go. And when they grow up, they will not depart from it. So it starts from home. You know, don't depend on the school or the church or after program, you know, or social media to train your children. And, and I want to say for those who are thinking about it, there is no benefit to suicide, no benefit at all. Suicide is not an option. It is not an option at all. That is something that the devil would like for you to do, but please don't do it. You did not give yourself life. You did not bring yourself into this world. You have no right to take yourself out, you know, and, and, and don't be selfish. Think about the, the impact on your family. Think about the impact on your children. Think about the impact on your community. Think about the impact on the globe. Who knows? Who knows if you will be the one to come up with the next vaccine for the next virus or pandemic. So please remember a, 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 a suicide is not an option. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Santos, Nini has lost his audio. Yeah, oh, um, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to say my last word in this program. Um, the first thing I would do is uh, try to help connect people who are suicidal or whenever they think about suicide, they should call the helpline. If it's in the US or Canada, it is 988 suicide and crisis lifeline 988 you can call or you can text 988 or you can also call the crisis line which is 741 741 that's if you are living in the continent here then uh, if you are in africa i'm fortunate that i have uh, moses strong here from cameroon and i'm working i'm partnering with him so i can link you up with him for follow up because I also do online um, evaluation, psychological evaluation. So uh, my phone number is plus one, four, four, two, three, four, seven, seven, zero, four, five. I repeat plus one, four, four, two, three, four, seven, seven, zero, four, five. Can you and put so, it on the chat box also? Put it on the chat box so that people watching yes. from Facebook and also put your website, please. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I will say that um, uh, people should not get themselves overtaken by that thought of ever thinking of killing themselves or killing someone because they should know that uh, after a fall comes rise, you rise after falling and you should know that you uh, difficulties and challenges are part of life and what doesn't make kills you makes you stronger. So right. uh, there is always uh, these three aspects you should consider uh, once you think or once that thought crosses your mind, you should think about the importance of life, how life is sweet, the good aspects of life. You should think about the importance of others, the others who love you, like your dear ones, your children, your spouse, uh, your relatives. And then you should also think about uh, the importance of yourself, life, others, there are three. Then now, uh, I will also say that um, there is, it is not worth it, it's not worth it to take your life away. And if you ever think about that, seek for support, talk to someone, open up to someone, a dear one, or if you cannot reach a practitioner, uh, be true to yourself and always know that everyone is, uh, is, is also handling things that are also equal to what you are handling. And so you should know this is a challenge that does not know, know about age, does not know about sex, and does not know about whether you are young or old. So you should know that uh, other people have been through what you are in, ask them, ask them how they did cope with this, and they will share you share opinions with you that may make you to, to give away those negative thoughts. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very okay. much, Dr. Santos. And uh, it is on that note, dear listeners, that we are going to conclude this edition today. It's been a pleasure being here with you and knowing that when you think of suicide, take a deep breath, drink a glass of water. Please, the life here is a hundred times better than any other life you will ever have because you will not have any if you take your life. Thank you very much and please enjoy the weekend, what is left of it and bye for now. See you next week. Bye.